Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Nicholas and today I'm going to be talking about my L1000 and a little bit of the history of it. Um, I've been able to research a lot into the history of this truck and be able to dig up some things that personally I didn't think I'd be able to dig up mainly pictures um, of it early on in its early service days. So let's get to that and uh, we'll talk about some future plans later on in the video. All right, so the first step in determining the history of this truck is really going to be the color. So I have some clear signs of what the original color of this truck was, mainly by from what I've pulled off of the truck. So originally there was a step here, and this step was mounted to the front of the truck simply for the fact that you could stand up on this and tighten down the straps on the vehicles up on top of the truck. So that those little steps there would have been there from the beginning, pretty much when the chassis was converted. So I know that this is an original paint underneath those steps, but they're obviously yellow. They're not like a chartreuse or anything like that. And they're a national school bus yellow, which means Dodge would have painted that. You can also see some parts underneath the grills some yellow, some more yellow, stuff like that. Little spots all around. You can find little pieces poking out. But another big portion to my theory that this truck was yellow comes from that underneath the cab, it is also yellow. And same thing with underneath the carpet, it is also yellow. So I have more than enough evidence telling me that this truck was yellow, which leads me to my next point. So, sometimes these grills on these trucks would have been painted the body color. So, Dodge, when they first released this truck, I think it was in 1965, you would have had a color pattern here or something like this, and this would have been the bottom color of the truck, and then the top color may have been a different color depending on the options. If the truck was one color, they would have painted everything that color. But they eventually started painting these white, like a cream color, and same with these guys down here, they would start to change things up as time went on around 68 to 70. And so I know that mine is a 70, which means that it's gonna be of those that later mindset. So I can see here on the paint that this grill was painted a red oxide primer, and then it had a cream like white color painted on top of it. On this bottom grill, it's a different story. It looks like it was yellow. Um, there's not a whole lot of ways I can test all the different spots to see exactly where everything is painted different colors, but I can see that's a yellow there. That's not rust. Yellow there. You can see the there's the plastic and then the primer another layer of primer, probably high build, and then a white color. Now, at some point in this truck's life, obviously it was painted red, as we can see here. There's some red. Red. Obviously there's a lot of red peeking there. But these grills were painted red, probably when, when the truck was painted red at whatever point. They just did red over everything. So that's a pretty good indicator that this truck was repainted at one time. It wasn't piecemealed in sections because of damage or anything like that. So I have a good lead of the truck was yellow and then red, which kind of narrows down basically who's owned the truck. Now the reason being that I just hashed out that this truck was yellow and then painted red is very important because it leads to determining who owned this truck originally and that's all that I have to go off of. I don't have any paperwork, I don't have anything like that will, that will give me a definitive piece of evidence that you know this truck was owned by this person who owned this company. I don't have any of that. So because the truck was yellow that leads me to my next point of the research that I had to do mainly of who had yellow trucks back in 1970 for car haulers specifically. So there were a couple companies, um, mainly four. We had Square Deal Transport, M&G Convoy, 
United Transport, and then we had Ryder. The reason this is not a Ryder truck, and I originally thought it was a Ryder truck maybe, is Ryder had a more, like a, it's not a chartreuse, but like a faded yellow for their trucks at the time. It was a very, very faded yellow, and it does not match the National School Bus yellow that I have on the truck here. So I know Ryder is out of the option, or out of the options. Another thing that basically points me out that this was not a Ryder truck was they didn't have this yellow until the 80s, and then they didn't use Dodges like these. They didn't, I, I can't find any record of Ryder using L1000s unless it was like a one-off thing. They bought a car hauler that was an L1000. So the next owner would be m and Convoy, and you can really lump United Transport into that, those, that little group there because they mainly only use the C-Series Dodges. I haven't found any pictures of any m and Convoy trucks or any United Transport trucks that used L1000s. So that immediately basically takes them out. They did have similar yellow to the National School Bus yellow that I have on the truck, but they didn't have any cab overs. So that leaves me with Square Deal Transport. Square Deal Transport was a relatively small company out of Colorado, and they basically, from what I have learned, took Mopars and I believe maybe some other companies, but mainly Dodges and, and Chrysler and all that, um, and hauled the new cars from the assembly factories to the dealership locations. That's kind of the image that I've gotten. I don't know if that's exactly true. They could have obviously done transport in other ways between deal dealerships, between dealerships. You, know, there, you could go down that rabbit hole, but their main job that I can figure out was they just transported from the dealerships, I'm sorry, for the, from the assembly factories to the dealerships. I do know that this was a square deal truck mainly because I have recently found out that there were around six to 10 L1000 cab overs, yellow, owned by Square Deal. I do have a picture, I don't believe it's this truck, but I have a picture of another Square Deal transport truck that was an L1000 and it was a, cab, or it was a car hauler with a full load. And that is the only cab over Dodge um, car hauler picture that I can find. Um, at least at the moment. I'm sure there might be someone with, you know, a bank of pictures that they might have from back in the day, but what's online from what I was able to research, that's it. So that's very good evidence that, you know, Square Deal owned a yellow Dodge L1000 and multiple of them. All right, so this brings me to my next point. How is this truck ordered? Well, that's a big cam three right there, and this truck is too old to have a big cam three in it from the factory. So the truck was ordered with an AV71. It was a 260 horsepower model, and it had the N55 injectors. And the truck came with a 13 speed. I don't know how long that lasted in it, but that's what it had. Um, the original rears are still in it, and did come with air ride because it was a car hauler. And these tanks, I do not believe, are original. They could be. I'm not positive on that. They are very rare tanks, and we'll get to that a little bit later, but it's pretty difficult to find anything about these tanks and like the history of the manufacturing of them. So obviously that's not the original motor to the truck, but is definitely a good motor that's gonna stay in it. So the truck itself is 25 foot long overall. Um, if it would have had the fifth wheel on the back of it, it would have been like another five foot, but it's 25 foot overall, nine foot tall to the cab, not the exhaust. And to the transmission shift point up here, right about here is 18 foot. So it's definitely a long truck stock and that's because it was a car hauler. And it was a pretty long truck for its time. Simply talking about you know length requirements of the time and I'm not gonna get into that because I'm not educated enough on it. Um, but this was very, very long for the time, and this was really a big step forward into modern day car hauling where you see nine car car haulers. I mean, this was kind of the first step of that. Things have definitely changed in the car hauling realm since this truck came out, and it really does make sense why it was retired. All right, now that we've talked a little bit about the history of the truck as a car hauler, we're moving from when it was owned by Square Deal Transport 
into Cassin's Transport. So Cassin's Transport bought this truck, I believe in the early 80s, around 80 to 82, around that time, where it was painted red. I know that this is Cassin's Red, so if you look at any of their trucks, you can see that they're all spotless and they're all the same red, which is a very good you know, a signifier that this was a Cassin's truck. I do know it was a Cassin's truck because of the previous owner, Mr. Randall. He did talk about that and how this truck was bought from Cassin's, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So that leads me to the next picture that I have of the truck, or the, the first picture that I have of the truck, and I'll put it up here. This truck was, like when it was painted red, this picture was taken, I think around, like I was saying before, 80 to 82, around that time period. So I do believe that picture is this truck, and that's where I'm gonna start to explain why I think this is that truck. So to confirm that this truck matches the truck that had a picture taken of in, in the 1980s, there's a couple of things that I have to do. I have to look at what is the same, and I have to basically find other pictures of this truck that I can basically compare everything to it. So I have a picture of this truck from the mid-1990s taken by the previous owner, Mr. Randall, and that, that previous picture was taken when the truck was in service, not when it was you know, put aside because it was no longer used. So there's a couple of differences, mainly the grill deflector, or these side deflectors, this really isn't something that you can go off of and say, oh, because that's missing, that that matches that original truck. Now, that is a good sign that it is missing because it means that they were damaged at one point, and I know that they're not here anymore, which means they were damaged. These are still here, so this was an option for the truck, so it would have been ordered with this. But you get into things like the grill. So the grill is obviously painted white right now, and then I've shown that it was painted red at some point, both were painted red, which matches that early picture. So because these both were painted red, I know that it's similar in that way. Moving to the fenders. If you look at the fenders on that 80s picture, they are completely torn up and damaged. I have similar issues still where the fenders are completely smashed in and you can see where they've been repaired where Bondo has been applied to kind of square the fender up a little bit. So that matches the 1980s picture. Things like the fuel tanks that are extremely rare, you, you cannot find those fuel tanks. Um, things like that are big signifiers that, hey, that matches that truck. The location of the battery box, that kind of matches it. Now, the biggest one of them all that says that's that truck is the rack. You cannot just take a rack off of one truck and swap it to another. That entails a lot of equipment and a lot of welding. I mean, you can do it, but it's a lot of work. The rack on this truck, when I got it, matches the picture from the 90s, so I know it wasn't swapped between then or anything crazy like that, but it also matches the picture from the 80s. So that picture that was taken in the 80s, even the trailer in the back matches exactly. So right there I know that this truck matches that picture that was taken in the 1980s. So that 1980s picture was most likely when Cassins first got the truck and did a little bit of work to it to get it a little bit cleaned up. Now you might be saying, hey Nick, you're stupid. Those wheels don't match. And that you are correct. Same thing with the exhaust. The exhaust does not match. But there's two explanations for that. First one, the exhaust would have been because this truck had the Detroit, so the Cummins wouldn't have been swapped in yet. So the exhaust went out on that side. Now, the hubs are a little bit more difficult. It would have required a donor truck that had similar size bearings and seals to swap those hubs off of that truck and put it on this truck. But if you're a big company like Cassin's Auto Transport, it would make more sense to go to that effort of go converting to the bud style wheels, which were extremely common at the time, so that your entire fleet is centered on one wheel style instead of having one truck that has Dayton's and then one truck that has bud style because you can't interchange those wheels. You can interchange the tires, just not the wheels. So 
it would have been either done by a later owner but or Cassins, but I believe Cassins is the one that converted the hubs from Dayton style wheels to the more modern Bud style. So once Cassins had no more use for this truck, it was sold to a gentleman who used the truck some, and then he sold it to another gentleman who owned auto carriers and Midwestern car carriers. Now the previous owner of the truck, him and his business partner both purchased auto carriers and Midwestern car carriers, which came with the acquisition of multiple trucks, including this one. And that is where the picture of this truck in the 90s comes from, where it has the red stripe and the auto carrier's markings on the side. Now, why is this all important? Tracking the history down of this truck and trying to figure out, you know, who owned it and all that good stuff. And it's right there. Chrome don't get you home. Now, this was a working man's truck. This, I mean, this was not an owner operator, like one guy driving it for 30 years. This was many, 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 many people in that driver's seat taking this truck all across the country, picking up loads and, and dropping them off and repeating the process over and over and over. And this helped a lot of people get through some hard times, whether they were a mechanic or, you know, they were a driver. So it's very important, you know, there, there is a lot of history to these commercial trucks. They put food on the table for a lot of families, and that's very important to mention. So this will live on as so will the number nine. This is number nine. Um, and that will live on with this truck forever and hopefully I can preserve that. Now, as I was just talking about preserving the history of this truck, and there are things that I want to do that represent that it was a car hauler. So little things like the square roof lights. I could return it to the original style, but it had square cab or it had square lights on the rack and I think I should try and return that to the truck. Little things like the footholds that were here, where this rack was mounted, little things like that. I would like to return those footholds, even though I have zero use for them, I would like to return that to the truck. Now, this is where it starts to get kind of, you know, well, you said chrome don't get you home, and now you're chroming it out. Well, I am obviously doing an aluminum grill. And if you've been watching, I've been TIG welding all of it and polishing it and grinding it all down and all that good stuff. But I'm putting the aluminum grills in. I am returning the truck to a bubble style mirror. So it's not gonna be a more a later style. I will add some LEDs to the truck, mainly the roof lights and the lollipops. So it'll just add to a cleaner look of the truck. And then up front for the steers, I will be doing 24-5 Alcoas. And this is mainly to get more height on the truck. I want to raise the front of this truck a little bit so that I have more height underneath the fuel tanks. And I will be polishing those, stripping them completely down and polishing them. I'll be doing a full video and then repairing this wheel. The other one's good, but for the front bumper, I will be returning it to the original front bumper. I don't know on the color yet. We'll see. We'll go down that road when we get there. Um, but just updating some of the lighting across it, doing a full a stainless exhaust, those little things that make such a big difference in the end, but don't take too far away from the truck. So I do need some input, whether that's on the exhaust. What do you think I should do on the, should I do an out rolled exhaust where the exhaust comes up and then rolls out? Do you think I should do a flap cap exhaust, something like that? Do you think I should do a tower for the intake um, tubes, the intake filter? Do you think I should just leave it at the height that it's at right now? I, I would like some feedback on that from y'all, but overall, I'm not trying to Gucci out the truck, if you want to call it that. I'm just trying to do tasteful modifications that improve the reliability, mainly with like the grill. I can entrust that if this gets hit with a rock, it's not going to shatter in a million pieces like the fiberglass did because it's old. So little things like that, you know, repair these, get these correct again. So just improving the truck as I go. I do have a lot of plans for this truck in terms of redoing the interior, getting it all cleaned up and, you know, working on that, getting all the electrical 
sorted out, doing all new airlines, all that kind of good stuff, new tanks, etc. And adding jakes to the motor, that will be a big step in the way of modifications. But just trying to get the truck going again in a good direction. So there will be some modifications that I do to the rear. And those modifications will be a light bar. And then obviously I have to redo all the suspension back here. Um, the frame has to be re-welded, or not re-welded, but welded back. And then possibly start looking for some new frame rails for back here, but I'm not down that road yet. I'm just trying to get the thing moving and uh, see what needs to be saved. Um, I'd like to maintain the original air suspension back here because it is pretty rare for this time as only car haulers and especially ordered trucks would have had that, like off-road vehicles or anything like that. So I'm trying to maintain those parts of the truck that are pretty important to the history of it. I don't want to just swap an air leaf in it because that's the easiest thing to do. If it comes to that and I have to, then I'll consider it, but I'm trying to maintain originality. So lots of work in the back here, especially with that frame. That frame is beat to the ends of the earth. But back here, this was completely encased, so it's been holding water. So there's a lot of rot back here that I will have to address, um, whether it's on the frame rail or anywhere else in this. So lots of lots of work back here. Thank you for getting to the end of the video. I really appreciate you watching to this point. If you have, um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And uh, please don't forget that this is a platform of sharing. Um, if you have any information on this truck, you were around this truck, you have pictures of this truck, please reach out to me and, you know, let me in on the scoop on some of these pictures and, you know, some of the information, any stories you have of it. I'm trying to preserve these vehicles for the future generations as, you know, word of mouth is good until the next guy that gets this truck in 70 years doesn't really care. So I'm trying to document everything that I can and trying to Obviously, like I've said, preserve a million times. Preserve, preserve, preserve. So these are very rare trucks. I don't know of you know very many out there. I know there are people out there that have these trucks, but um, I'm trying to preserve as much information on them as possible because it is a cool little part of history. You know, we're coming right out of the Korean War, going into the Vietnam War. There's a lot of economic changes going on, people getting different jobs, a lot of legislation changes within trucking. So a lot of this stuff ended up changing because it wasn't safe or emissions. So I'm trying to document this point in history, especially with this truck specifically, and then obviously my other vehicles. So if you have any information, please reach out. And uh, like I said, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more episodes on it. I'm going to document everything on this truck. I'm not just going to do stuff off camera and then do the cool stuff on camera. I want to include all of it. So. Again, I thank you for watching. Um, stay tuned for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Y'all have a blessed one, and happy Thanksgiving.